Welcome to Shannon's Club TV, the show for all motoring enthusiasts to relive the histories of significant cars in Australia. In each episode, we uncover the important factors that defined our feature car on the road and in competition. Now, coming up, we'll bring you the latest market trends from the Shannon's auctions team, plus an up-close look at our feature car with a proud owner. Right now, though, the Falcon that would make or break Ford Australia, the XP series. The XP Falcon, launched in March 1965, was the fourth local Falcon series based on the original 1960 XK model. After Ford Australia skipped the major 1964 US facelift to fix the original Falcon's highly publicised failures once and for all, it was the local Falcon's last chance. If it failed, Ford Australia would have soon been forced to close its local manufacturing operations which had been around since 1925. These were high stakes for a model showing its age against a fresher Holden and Valiant. For the XP facelift, Ford Australia had cheekily, but cheaply, grafted the front panels of the 1960 Mercury Comet to the rear section of the previous XM series. Only a new grille linked it to the latest US Mustang and Galaxy models. The big change was the XP's new torque box construction. Ford's marketing term for the extra box section reinforcements that the first Falcon's unitary structure needed for local conditions. Yet they were not strictly new either, as they had been developed earlier to hold the local XM hardtop together with its pillarless roofline. As early Falcon floor pans ran out, these new torque boxes were fitted to other XM Falcons. Because this was done without fanfare, it delivered a one-shot opportunity for Ford's new marketing chief, Bill Burke, to sell the XP as a vastly improved new model. Mark, would it be fair to suggest that Ford, with its back to the wall, <laughs> invented a motorsport event where the XP Falcon would shine? Well, it is when you think of the you know, almost insane concept they came up with, the 70,000 mile durability run, which required a fleet of XP Falcons to run the equivalent of 140 Bathurst 500s in a very short time frame, non-stop. I mean, with that concept, it was the best way they could showcase the strengths of that car. And keep in mind at Bathurst, you know, in those days Ford was running the Cortina GT and in 65 the Cortina GT500, the Harry first special. So this car would not have been competitive in a Bathurst context. So this was the right way to go. Yes, it was. Mm. And Ford had also kept a few cards up its corporate sleeve to make the XP Falcon more attractive to Australian buyers. Ford increased boot space by placing the spare vertically at the side. The front seat was widened considerably. Both immediately opened up volume taxi sales. The XP was the first Falcon to offer the new Borg Warner three-speed automatic and front disc brakes as options. Deep foam bench seats were not only standard front and rear in the mainstream XP Deluxe, they were the first at this level to be fully stitched and pleated with the latest soft feel expanded vinyl. Australia's first and only pillarless coupe continued in the XP range. Because the imported roofline had already appeared as a Mercury Comet, it looked sharp. To top it all, Ford replaced the four-door Futura with a new Fairmont level as a running change. The XP Fairmont set a new benchmark with its lavish cabin, backed by standard front disc brakes, 14-inch wheels, US Fairlane wheel covers and three-speed automatic. As Falcon credibility was restored, XP sales soared and Ford was out of the woods. Desperate times required desperate measures, Mark. Selling the XP's extra durability was a case of fortune favouring the brave, or was it the foolhardy? <laughs> well, it was probably a bit of both, to be honest. Mm. But uh, it just goes to show that high stakes gambling can have a big payoff. In 1965, Ford Australia's audacious strategy to get people saying good things about Falcon was as desperate as it was inspired, launching its new make or break XP model with a highly publicised torture test. What was officially known as the Falcon Mobile 70,000 mile durability run was the brainchild of brilliant American Bill Burke, Ford Australia's new marketing and sales manager who later became company boss. Burke knew Ford needed to lay it all on the line with what seemed a crazy marketing concept. A fleet of showroom stock XP Falcons would need to run non-stop at high average speeds of 70 miles per hour for nine days and nights to achieve the combined distance of 70,000 miles or 112,000 kilometres. 
Joe, no one knows how Bill Burke chose 70,000 miles at 70 miles an hour, but he must have had unshakable faith in the XP Falcons engineering to commit to such an incredible challenge. Well, the truth, Mark, <laughs> is Bill Burke's uh, grand gesture, if you like, mm. was typical of why the Falcon was in trouble in the first place. He had really no idea of what the, our durability track was like. Mm. Uh, it wasn't a smooth oval as you would find in the States. Mm. Uh, and I, I think he thought it would be probably a reasonable uh, thing to do. Uh, what we don't hear about uh, often enough mm. is the enormous effort that Harry Firth exactly. and Ford's competition manager, Les Powell. And the story goes that, that Les Powell had, had just so much, uh, <laughs> it was just so much on the line to make this work and yeah. to avoid disaster that he went and ran a pub in Geelong. It yeah. seemed easy by comparison. <laughs> he couldn't so it. while it was stuff of legend, it was the necessary gesture that we needed to mm. get Ford Australia out of their problems. Yeah. Uh, if it wasn't for Harry Firth and Les Powell, it would never have happened. It really was a crazy idea. Yeah, yeah they really were the dynamic duo, weren't they? The venue was the torturous 4.3 kilometre basic durability road at the company's new vehicle proving ground in Victoria. Ford supplied six brand new XP Falcons in a mix of four-door sedan and two-door hardtop body styles, 170 Pursuit and 200 Super Pursuit engines, and manual and automatic transmissions. A shortage of drivers threatened to bring the event to a premature end, with the original list of only 22 growing dramatically over the nine days to combat some severe driver fatigue. Much higher wear rates than anticipated also meant tyres were in short supply. And a number of high-speed crashes had weary mechanics working miracles around the clock to keep the increasingly battered fleet mobile. Somehow, they kept the whole mad circus running, and in the early hours of a cold Monday morning in May, five Falcons flashed across the finish line to complete the 70,000-mile torture test at an average speed of more than 70 miles per hour. Any lingering doubts about the Falcon's toughness were immediately erased. The success of the durability run prompted a nationwide advertising blitz, topped off by the XP Falcon winning the Wheels Car of the Year award. The resulting big boost in Falcon sales set Ford Australia on a fast track to success, and it was all thanks to the new XP Falcon and Bill Burke's 70,000 mile high stakes gamble. You can read many other great road and race stories on the Shannon's Club website. My name's Pino Lamoli and um, this is a 1966 XP two-door hardtop. I bought her in, um, back in 2001, about 14 years ago, and I bought the trading post and I was looking for an electric guitar and I started looking in the um, unique cars. I come across a few XPs because I've always loved them, always wanted one. As a little boy, I always wanted a blue coupe. I went with a mate of mine and we looked at three that day and, and this was the third one and I bought it on the spot, pretty much. So key features about the car is um, all original, hasn't been modified. It's been restored about five years ago, but I've kept it as original as possible. It's got the original 170 Pursuit motor, three-speed automatic, factory disc brakes. Took quite a bit of time, three and a half years for the restoration. Sourcing materials from the US and from here and restoring what I could. And this is a result of, of all the work. Uh, what's unique about the 66 is um, they started off with the XKs and then XLs and XMs and they were made for the American market. They were introduced here, they weren't made for Australian road conditions, but by the time it got to the XP, Ford Australia done a lot of development for Australian roads. I've got an XK Falcon as well and having an XP, the difference in drives is completely incredible. How they developed a car in six years and, and that's what makes this car unique. This car's my passion, I'll never sell this car. It's, uh, I've had it for 14 years and, and, and hopefully carry it on to the next generation. I'll just look after it until then. Well, if you're interested in buying an XP Falcon, Shannon's auctions manager, Chris Borobon, joins us. Hello, Give us all the details. Welcome Hi. to the show, Chris. Hi, Chris. Chris, XP Falcon. Mm. 
there's some real movement in that market at the moment, yet there's so many different variations. How do we make sense of it? Good question. Isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> we are, look, we are seeing a, you know, a really uh, strong market out there for it, you know, from a club scene perspective. We're seeing uh, the rock sort of billy scene also mm -hmm. getting fairly heavily into them. Uh, so we're seeing a few come through the auction house, which is great. So, so we have the wagon, the sedans, in deluxe and it's a big it's a big series of cars. All this Futura, yeah, yeah, which yeah. they had for a short time, but they kept going on the yeah. hardtop. Yeah. Then Fairmont came along, yeah. which Extremely was a rare. Re really nice mm. car. It had disc brakes, nice interior. Um, panel van, yeah. Ute. Don't see much of those. And something yeah. like really rare, like the Squire wagon with the wood grain yeah. on the side. I mean, boy, these are these are pretty rare models these days. Yeah, it, look, I think we, we've seen a few squires come through over the years and, mm. and they're great. Um, a very desirable, sought after by collectors. Um, mm. Panel van, we're not really seeing many of at all. The Fairmonts, as you mentioned, again, extremely rare today. So, um, so it's fair yeah. to say that there's a different buyer group for most of these or is it everybody just likes XP Falcons or is it you find there's subtle differences no, in the buyers? I think we are seeing a different buyer group for these cars, um, a, a different buyer for the wagons, uh, Squire wagons, to what we'd see for the hardtop mm -hmm. um, and sedan. So yeah, look, and they've, you know, they're a reliable, versatile car mm. um, and practical and, and still affordable. And I think that's probably been the attraction of them. And on that point, like, what are they like for servicing, restoration, repairs? Is there pretty good backup? Pretty good backup, I think, overall. There's a pretty strong club scene Australia-wide for them. So I think you know we are seeing a lot of uh, you know a lot of people helping each other out, which is yeah, good to see. You yeah, you do get that. Yeah. yeah. So Chris, there's a really interesting thing happening with XPs. There's there's the modified brigade, and some of them are very high quality and very yeah. appealing. Yeah. There are others where which are just messed around with, and there's the other one, the, the really nice original cars. And I think XP Falcon had some really nice colours and trim. So there's obviously a a ban there for original cars. Mm. Where, how do we make sense of that? And and you know, if we're advising owners what to do or what not to do. Yeah. Oh, look, I think if we got a car that is close enough to standard, you know, get it back to its original colour and the original deluxe trim, which is gorgeous in those cars. Yes. So that, that's probably mm. the way to have it. Yes. Um, but yeah, obviously, you know, for the people who are into the modified cars, the street machines, or uh, the sort of rockabilly scene, well, that's. That's sort of personal taste. But do it properly. Do it properly, yeah, mm. that's right. Yeah. Well, thanks for joining us, Chris. Thank you, guys. And keep in mind, you can keep up to date on all the latest Shannon's Auctions news on the Shannon's Club website. If you'd like a lasting memory of any competition cars featured on the show, you'll find them all at autopix.com.au. Joe, I guess in wrapping up the XP Falcon, you know, people talk about hero Falcons, obviously the Falcon GTs, the GDHO, they're top of the list. But for me, the XP Falcon is the hero Falcon because without this car, Ford Australia wouldn't have made it. Yes, and it's easy to forget that because mm. it's all past history now. And of course, they went on from success to success. Bill Burke did more and more competition and pushed the envelope mm. even further. But that XP Falcon was an exceptional car. There was really no other way of getting that message across because it still looked a little bit ordinary. It was still based yeah. on the 1960 model and it was up against a really fresh HD Holden, mm. AP5, AP6 Valiant at that point. They were much newer cars. Mm. What, a, what an enormous success and terrific value they placed in that car. They mm. really presented well. They not only succeeded in the durability stakes, but in the showroom. Metallic paint, beautiful trim. Mm. They, they were bringing the glamour. And the best measure of all, Mark, mm. Holden was scared. Yeah. You could see that from the models after that, Ford had finally woken up the sleeping mm. giant. Yeah. And we and Australians benefited. Yeah, I agree. A very pivotal car. Well, we hope you've enjoyed reflecting on the make or break XP Falcon. We look forward to your company next time on Shannon's Club TV. Bye for now.